This is the second part of a lecture from um, October 21st, 2020, outlining the basic functions of skeletal muscle. And in this particular part of the lecture, we're going to focus on the molecular process of muscle contraction or the power stroke um, or sliding filament mechanism. And we discussed in the previous lecture that sarcomeres are the contractile units of muscle. Right? And sarcomeres extend from Z-line to Z-line. You can see one sarcomere here. And it has both um, thick filaments made of myosin and thin filaments made of actin. And you can see in this GIF here, <coughs> the sarcomere is contracting, right? And the thick filament or myosin is actually kind of pulling both actin and actin thin filaments on either side closer to the center of the sarcomere. Right? And we're gonna look in more detail at what's actually happening at this interaction between actin and myosin that makes um, these filaments slide together. Right, and so the mechanism of muscle contraction is usually called the sliding filament mechanism because the actin filaments and myosin filaments slide past each other in order for that sarcomere to contract. And so when a signal to contract is received, um, the first thing that needs to happen is um, ATP actually comes <clears throat> and binds to myosin heads and releases those myosin heads from the actin filaments, which you can see in blue. Myosin heads are in red, right? And that binding of ATP to myosin actually cocks back the myosin head or bends it backward in preparation for contraction. So it's sort of like pulled back, primed and ready to go when it's bound to ATP. Right, so signal to contract comes in, ATP binds to the myosin heads in red, cocks those myosin heads back. Myosin is not bound to actin yet, but it is primed and ready and pulled back, ready to go. <clears throat> and then, as we uh, discussed in the previous lecture, myosin heads themselves, this region, are ATPases or have ATPase function, which means the myosin heads can hydrate this ATP molecule that's bound to them, to ADP and inorganic phosphate, right? And when that happens, an ADP bound myosin head will be able to bind to the actin filament, right? So ATP came in, myosin heads were not bound to actin, but they cocked back. Then ATP was hydrolyzed by the ATPases of the myosin head into ADP and inorganic phosphate and ADP bound myosin heads in this conformation can bind to actin. So the heads are cocked back, ready, bound to actin and ready to pull forward. And the thing that actually pulls the actin filament forward is called the power stroke. <laughs> and the power stroke is mainly triggered by the release of this inorganic phosphate. So once that inorganic phosphate dissociates from ADP, the power stroke can happen. And this myosin head will pull actin towards the center of the sarcomere. And then ADP can be released from this myosin head. And actin and myosin remain bound together, ready for the next ATP molecule to come in and signal another round of contraction. So one more time, right? Signal to uh, contract is received. And at this point, myosin and actin are still bound together. But in order for that kind of contraction to occur, myosin has to unbind from actin, which it does upon binding to ATP. Myosin and actin unbound, unbind to each other. ATP bound myosin heads cock back and get in the ready position. And then the myosin heads hydrolyze ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate, allowing the myosin head to now bind to actin in its cocked back ready position. Inorganic phosphate is released, and that pulls, the myosin head pulls the actin filament towards the center of the sarcomere. ADP is released, and the whole thing can start again.
And what that looks like um, in sort of animated view is can be seen right here, right? So ATP comes in and cocks that head back, hydrolyzes, binds to actin and pulls it forward. Cocks back, binds, pulls forward. ATP binds, cocks it back, it can then hydrolyze ADP bound form of myosin heads, binds to actin and pulls it forward. And this happens many, many times so that the sarcomere can contract, um, right? So you can see one power stroke, two, three, four, five. Every time the myosin heads pull the actin forward, that would be considered one power stroke. And multiple power strokes put together will allow this thin actin filament to slide past the thick actin one towards the center of the sarcomere, shortening it, and ultimately contracting the muscle. And so one more time, see it cock back, now combined, and then that's the power stroke right there. Right. And ultimately, as I said, this is the full muscle contraction. It's not just a result of one power stroke in one sarcomere, but many, many power strokes over millions and millions of sarcomeres throughout the myofibrils of the muscle.